I recently had a chance to catch up with my friend Andreas in person in Seattle as he was visiting to attend the Microsoft Build event. Andreas is a thought leader in the domain of Vision AI. He started his career at Yale and now is working for a company called Cognex, building advanced rocketized vision devices and applications and services. Andreas uh, has some interesting perspective on why it took so long for ML at the edge and for vision AI to happen uh, and used in the industry. We'll talk about can a company be still be just a device company or does it have to go into the services world? So I'll let you just jump in and listen what Andreas has to teach us about vision AI and AGI in general. And if you like this episode, please subscribe to the channel, give us a like, leave a comment, let us know how we're doing. Hi everyone, this is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. We are in person with Andreas today here in Seattle. Um, there's Microsoft Build going on. And I thought it was a good opportunity to catch up with my friend Andreas and talk about Edge AI. Andreas, how are you? Hey, Olivier, I'm very good, thank you. You're how good? are you? I'm, I'm great, fantastic. It's not raining, right? That's what we want. So tell me, you are in a company called Cognex. Like you're more than just being in the company, you've been at the inception uh, of it, um, and you know a lot about AGI. So tell us a little bit about you know what is Cognex, and then we'll rewind history and go back into you know who you are and how you came to uh, to Cognex and what you're doing today. So what is Cognex first? So Cognex is a, is a machine vision company. We we specialize in uh, embedded uh, machine vision. Mm -hmm. For, for industrial applications uh, primarily, as well as e-commerce applications. And, and Cognex is really focused on, on four key things. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's gauging, which is about measurement. Okay. Uh, identification, which is reading barcodes in harsh environments. Okay. Guidance, which is robotics uh, guidance. Mm -hmm. And quality inspections. Okay. So those are uh, the, the key domain areas that, that we focus yeah, on. Yeah, very concrete scenarios and, and people can already see the kind of applications for this kind of yes. equipment. Yes, right? and the, 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 uh, the applications we specialize in uh, is what I would call near field vision applications mm -hmm. where the camera is, is not staring in the, the scene at large. It's, yeah. it's more focused on, on a line, on, on a product, on an object. Yeah, and we're talking about things that are very ruggedized and, and they are evolving in very harsh environments. Uh, so that's something that is very specialized. Yes, so, so in those applications, especially to roll out vision at scale, you need to have very robust uh, enclosures, you need to have specialized lensing and lighting, and, and you need to be uh, very consistent and repeatable. Where are you coming from and how did you come to do what you're doing today? So that's an interesting question, Olivia. <laughs> so uh, I've been in this space for a while. Uh, so I, I actually, I, I started my career in academia uh, working on, on wireless sensor networks. Mm -hmm. and, and back then we, we were dealing with cameras as well and we were trying to do uh, macro sensing tasks. So we were trying to like track uh, behaviors of people for, for security and defense applications, uh, as well as for uh, uh, elder monitoring and healthcare applications. So we were trying to, for example, measure the cognitive decline of a person by looking at their movements on their home floor plan. Uh, so we were, I've been working for a while in this uh, macro sensing space where you use sensors, especially cameras, in a privacy preserving way mm -hmm. to extract uh, higher level behaviors out of the data. Okay, so it's, it's not recent, right? There's something that was, was worked on like how many years ago? So I... I've Without been putting you on the spot, right? Yeah, yeah I don't <laughs> want to reveal my age, but, uh, but uh, let's say I've been working on this like, let's say 15 years ago I started. Okay. Uh, so when I started my career at Yale, uh, so I've been working on it for, for a while and um, a lot of things have changed uh, okay. between now and then. Yeah. So, so technology has moved uh, along yeah. and uh, today you see the hype, you observe like the, there is a lot of progress on, on semiconductors and 
on, on microcontrollers with NPUs and then all the machine learning and transfer mm -hmm. learning and all of that. But besides that, there were a lot of other little things that made a lot of progress in the last decade or so. Okay, okay. So you could imagine, for example, things like databases have evolved a lot. We have a lot of like lightweight time series databases. We have cloud databases. Um, all the cloud ecosystems evolved and, and the, all the access control and security around them evolved a lot. Uh, so there, there are many pieces in many areas that are coming together now. So this is like an exciting time. And on top of that, the, the evolution of AI and AI agents and all of that is, is helping to like pull those configurations together fast at low overhead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and the ability to compose and the overhead to compose becomes lower and lower. Are you, are you like a kid in a Lego store? You're just like all the things you thought about 10, 15 years ago and you know, idealize or say, hey, if we could do that, if we had this, is it coming into place? You were saying all these things have evolved, right? Have, and are coming to maturity or, or are good enough. Are you, do you feel like this kid yes, in the candy Yes, actually, store? That's, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Actually, that's how I felt the, the first time I visited Cognex. Okay. Uh, when I saw what they were doing and the cameras and all the configurations they had, it really felt like a playground. Uh, but today you get a lot more things with the evolution of technology. So uh, a good way to look at it is that, you know, with, with cameras and AI, you, you can potentially compose uh, an infinite number of sensors. So okay. with all the, the trainings that you do in the different applications, with, with still images, with video, you, you, can, you, you have a, a limitless uh, combinations of sensors. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, all the other pieces are in place to create end-to-end -end solutions. So it, it's not just the sensing piece. The sensing piece is a big part of the equation, but it's also how you parse the sensor data and index it, mm -hmm. and how do you offer valuable services on top of that. So all these pieces of technology are, are coming together now, and yeah, it's yeah. becoming much more feasible to do those things because you don't have to build all the components by yourself. Yeah, you don't have to solve all the technical problems. You can go from the idea to the realization or implementation, leveraging the bits and pieces, Lego boxes, you know. Um, let me ask you, we, we are talking about edge AI, as in AI at the edge, right? In, in the case of Cognex, the models are running locally. They're not running in the cloud, or at least what well, they are trained, I guess, in the cloud, but they're not, they're not run up there because of latency problems, because of confidentiality as well. We're talking about like lots of pixels. Uh, and so do you see an evolution of mindsets and uh, as well as technology that lead these edge AI scenarios to be possible and also to be preferred to something that I've seen some time ago, which is sending everything in the cloud and then doing inferencing up there and then sending data back to the, to the machines or devices, right? Yes, absolutely. Actually, the, the edge is much more reliable, uh, especially when you, you take like a modality like vision. Mm -hmm. So in vision, vision has been around for decades and with, with a lot of excellent results. And it's very easy to have an impressive demo in the lab. Yep. But when you come to real world deployment in industrial settings and at scale, uh, you really have to be very robust mm -hmm. and, and very low latency. So uh, in those applications, it really pays off to run AI on the edge. Mm -hmm. and, and that will definitely come at, uh, at a lower cost because we're talking at millions of images per day per line that if you had to transfer that data to, to the cloud, it's, it's really, it's impractical and, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's very expensive. Yeah, and would you say that like technology is ready? You, you already said like things are getting together. You think it's the era of AGI? We are there, it's coming, I, it's here? I think we're getting there. I think we're yeah. getting there. I think the, you know, the thing that I would emphasize is that we are, we are at the beginning. We are at the, uh, the level where we can solve the, for the sensing problem and, and create a lot more richer sensors through this. Uh, but now the, the big question for everyone is, is actually what are the meaningful services that you can offer over, over those newly yeah. created data streams? And I think 
I think that's a huge opportunity, but, but it, it's really boiling down to domain expertise and uncovering like the impactful problems to solve. Yeah, interesting. So we are, we are at Build here, Microsoft Build event. Uh, it's a lot about agentic AI, new candies in the store, I would say. Do you see any impact of this notion of you know, AI as agents or what I call apps, modern apps, new apps, new types of apps? Uh, do you see that actually coming into play in that notion of trying to find the scenarios or the use cases, the right services, the right business cases? Do you think that's going to help as well? Well, it's going to help. It's going to take a lot of uh, exploration and I see, you know, like a lot of the uh, first things that happen, it's it's like a lot of proof of concepts, a lot of experimentation. Yeah, yeah. But but I, I think it will um, eventually enable things, mm -hmm. and and uh, I'm I'm really optimistic from the uh, the demos I see at Build, where uh, the entire configuration of an application is already being handled by an agent. So it really saves developers a, a ton of time. And operators. And, and operators. Yeah. Uh, but, but we still need to nail down the, the right applications that, yeah. that we have like a good customer impact in the market. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Andres. I think uh, I look forward to it. We'll put some of the references of Cognex, some images of what we're talking about here today. That was a good insight into AGI and where things are going. Thank you very much. Maybe I'll see you again on the IT show soon. Thanks everyone for tuning Thank in. Thank you, Olivia.